We are right in the middle of winter season. It's cold and windy and sometimes wet. Wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> Lovely. Um, I'd like to welcome the first time visitors, uh, Lance and Anne. Welcome to our congregation. I hope you enjoy our service and uh, fellowship uh, during the morning. Um, in the past week, uh, we had uh, New South Wales General Assembly, uh, which was one of the longest and the hardest assembly I've ever been to. Uh, it wasn't easy, uh, but I survived. Uh, please keep praying for the New South Wales General Assembly uh, as we have uh, a couple of important matters to deal with until next year. Uh, Nance Zulu uh, has got COVID. Uh, Tano is still okay, could be a matter of time, uh, but Nance doesn't have any serious symptoms, which is good. So Nance could be here next Sunday. Uh, if you go to the church hall for morning tea, you will see uh, the new basketball ring that has been installed thanks to Jim. Uh, it looks great, so you're all welcome to join me playing basketball. <laughs> I'll commence this service with Isaiah chapter 55, Isaiah 55, verses 6 and 7. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. Let's bow in prayer. Lord God, eternal and almighty Father, we acknowledge and sincerely confess before your most holy majesty that we are miserable sinners, conceived and born in iniquity and sin, prone to evil, incapable in the flesh of any good work, and that in our corruption we make no end of breaking your holy commandments. We thus call down destruction on ourselves from your just and holy judgments. Nevertheless, Lord, we lament that we have offended you, and we condemn ourselves and our faults with true repentance, asking you to help us from our wretchedness by your grace and mercy. Be pleased, our most gracious God and Father, to pour out your mercy on us in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Blotting out our faults and our sinfulness, daily increasing us the gifts of your Holy Spirit, that we from our inner hearts, acknowledging our sin, may be more and more displeasing to ourselves and become truly repentant, that your Holy Spirit may produce in us the fruits of righteousness and holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. First of him this morning is great issue of faithfulness. <laughs>
next to him that we'll be singing is the God of Abraham. Praise. <laughs> Saturday the 17th of August, 6 for 6.30, and that's for the annual congregational dinner, and uh, make that a priority to put in your uh, planning calendar. Um, there's uh, this year's theme is the Mad Hatter's Dinner, which now that, that certainly brings some interesting pictures, a lot of people <coughs> might wear to that. I'm not sure what everyone's going to wear, but I'm sure it'll be something that'll be quite outstanding. Um, there'll be a special category for the, in the competition for the best ladies 1960s style hat. Uh, think about that one. The other message is save the date is for the 25th of August following that uh, congregational dinner at 11.30 at Donmore Reserve. And uh, see Fiona uh, if you need any more details about that. Make sure that one's in the diary as well. 
Now, um, as you've been told, he notices uh, the church will be conducting a Breaking the Silence Foundation training this Tuesday, 1 to 3 o'clock here at the church. Uh, I'll be leading the training. If you hold any position within the church or would like to be involved in pastoral care or children's <coughs> ministry, you're required to actually complete that foundation training every three years. And uh, there are a number of uh, people who three years is up ready to do the next life and, and we're calling for others who'd like to do that. But there are two ways of doing that. One, you can do it online and at the end of doing the two hours online, you do the quiz. The other way is do it in face-to-face. -face. The advantage of that is that you've got people to actually discuss the material with. So, uh, and the other advantage of, of joining the face-to-face is there's no quiz. So, um, but that's this. If you're coming, could you let me know today so I know how, how many uh, workbooks I need to uh, print for uh, uh, the train. One to three on Tuesday here. And um, you know, every, everyone is welcome who wants to be involved in those ministries. Morning tea will be in the hall after the service. And everyone's invited to join in. And of course, talking about coffee. Then we've got the men's coffee on the 6th of August, 10.30 at the June Cafe. I don't think I think I've covered nearly all the announcements there. Okay, let us pray. Lord, we pray that the offering we bring before you today will be blessed and that it will be used to glorify you. Provide wisdom and discernment to those charged with its use. Lord, help us to work for peace and justice. Help us to identify with the needs and hopes of those we may meet in all aspects of our lives. Help us to advocate for them when they are unable to do that themselves. Help them to know that whether they are in the heights or depths, light or darkness, may they never forget God's unending love for them. We pray particularly for our missionaries throughout the world and those within our own community, bringing the love of Jesus to others in their family, their friends, workplace, wider relationships. Surround those who speak out, we pray, with the warmth of your love and acceptance. Lord God, be with all those who heal or attend to the needs of others. We pray particularly for doctors, the nurses, counsellors, our ministers, and others engaged in pastoral care. May their words be full of your love. Give us the strength and boldness to persist in our work, walk with you. Help us to overcome the obstacles that we face and to remain steadfast in our faith. Help us to witness for you and to speak the truth in love. May your Holy Spirit empower us to do your will. Lord, being led by those thoughts, we pray that our faith in you increases, that our hunger for your word intensifies, and that our church here at Castle Hill be strengthened as we learn to love one another as you love us. Loving God, we thank you for our family and friends who love us, for work and leisure that inspires us, and a faith that brings meaning and purpose day by day. We are truly thankful for all you have done and continue to do for us day by day. <coughs> the Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to those who seek him. Never let us forget that throughout all the days that have gone, you have been present. For this we give thanks, and for that act of faith in us, we offer today our thanksgiving. Lord God, and in thanksgiving, we bring our praises for others. We pray for our Pastor Moses, his wife Hannah, daughter Neary, guide and keep them safe and well at all times. We pray for those for whom the daily news brings no peace or joy, especially those at this time who live in Ukraine or in the Middle East. We pray for Christians throughout the world who are being persecuted or discriminated because of their faith. Lord God, may your peace descend slowly like a dove on those lands. We pray for our King and our politicians at every level. 
give them all strength, courage and wisdom to carry out their roles. And Lord, in this moment of silence, we place before you now the needs of those for whom especially today we wish to pray. Eternal loving God, we are in awe as we worship today. Help us to always place you at the centre of our lives. These we ask and pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And next hymn is hymn 522, I Will Sing the Wondrous Story. <laughs> If we claim we have not sinned, 
we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate within the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Years ago, uh, there was a publication called the Christian Business Directory. Uh, our church was listed in this directory. We paid. Uh, it was famous, or should I say, infamous. Too often, I hear people say that they had been so burned by businesses listed in the directory that they use the directory as a guide for who not to call. The accusation was clear. Some Christian business people, they deceived and they lied. Some Christians who were listed in the directory were hypocrites. It is an accusation which reflects the reality that as Christians, we do not live a consistent Christian witness. We say we want to be Christ followers, who are loving and compassionate, and who are patient and are full of grace. Yet in reality, we are not. We gossip, we speak behind the backs of others, and we lie and deceive. There is a very famous uh, philosopher and a linguist. His name is Noam uh, Chomsky. He rightly said, hypocrites are those who apply to others the standards that they refuse to accept for themselves. He was absolutely right. What are we like when we think no one is looking? There are so many inconsistencies. Sometimes it is spiritually ugly. I am a hypocrite too. In fact, there are parts of the hypocrisy that we kind of like. So we start to develop different versions of us. There is the Sunday go to church version and the Monday I'm back at work version and the Friday with my secular friends version. When the Sunday version of us <coughs> meets the Friday version of us, the Sunday version looks to the ground and shakes their head and says, hypocrite. So what does the Bible say about hypocrites? Let's find that out in our text this morning. First John chapter 1 verses 5 to 10. This is a message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light, in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have a fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. These verses are calling out to all hypocrites. The word hypocrite comes from the Greek word hypocrites, hypocrites which literally translated means an interpreter from underneath. It was used to describe actors 
in ancient Greek and Roman theatre. We wore large masks to show which uh, character they were playing. Actors interpreted the story from underneath their masks. The actor was one person, the mask was totally a different person which the actor wanted to portray to the audience. The real person under the mask was someone totally different. Likewise, hypocrites live their life from behind the mask. So our Lord Jesus used that particular word to expose the actions of the teachers of the law and the Pharisees in Matthew's Gospel chapter 23, he said, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Now, please note that in our text, John doesn't isolate the hypocrites and leave them in a place of hopelessness. John doesn't start by saying, this is a message we have heard, you are all useless hypocrites, you are condemned. No, he doesn't say that. Instead, John says this in verse 5. This is a message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. So his light exposes our lustful thoughts, our coveting hearts, <coughs> The idols we worship, the jealousy we feel, our selfish ambitions and lack of self-control. When God shines a light, which He always does, and when He keep on going as if the light is not shining, when we keep walking in the darkness and say to ourselves, it is not so bad. No one is getting hurt. Everyone else is doing it. Or when we keep on claiming, I can stop whenever I want. Or I have it all under control. I'm very different. When we keep on living like that, then we are definitely hypocrites. But it is not hypocrisy to say, I confess that I have fallen into temptation. And it is not hypocrisy to say, sin is winning the battle for my heart. The fact that we know we, won't, we don't live as Jesus wants us to live, that does not automatically make us hypocrites. This is a testimony of the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 7. He said, I do not understand what I do, but what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do this, I keep on doing. What an honesty. What a testimony. This is a testimony of the Apostle Paul, who has written all those letters telling the church how to live for Jesus. He tells all these Christians what to do, but he can't even do it himself. 
people hearing this testimony may make the accusation that Paul, you are a hypocrite. But no. Hypocrites stay behind the mask and portray a different person to the audience. Paul is not behind the mask. Paul has taken off the mask and shown himself to the world. This is not hypocrisy. That is what a biblical approach to the confession of a sin looks like. Confession brings a sin into the light and brings us into fellowship. Confess your sins. Seeing the sin and saying, yes, that is a sin. That leads us away from unrighteousness to forgiveness. As 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Confession gives Jesus the ability to stand with us and says, Father, this is your child. I defend this child. I'll be their advocate. Are we standing behind the mask? Or have we put the mask aside? <coughs> Those who take off the mask stand in the light of God's word. And God tells us how we can live in kingdom obedience. The word of God talks about the acts of the flesh. And we don't stay in the deception. Galatians the 5 says this, Avoid the sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Right up to this passage, there is a passage about the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, which we looked at and thought about during our children's talk in the past two months. God's Word lights up and reveals the truth of our lives. Those in the light get out from behind the mask and recognize the authority and the power of God's Word and come in confession and come in obedience. Hypocrites can't do that. They can't accept the fact they have sinned. So they stay behind the mask. And hypocrites continue the deception by renaming sin. They give all kinds of excuses. They blame others. They say, I made a mistake, I took a wrong turn. It is a flaw in my character. I didn't know there is a deficiency in my education, so I'm not at fault. I blame my parents. I blame the environment and background. There's a story of the Prussian king Frederick the Great. Frederick the Great was once touring a Berlin prison. The prisoners fell on their knees before him to proclaim their innocence. Majesty, Majesty, we are innocent. I didn't make this crime. I was used, and I was misunderstood, I was mistreated. Except for one man who remained silent. And the Frederick called to him, Why are you here? Armed robbery, Your Majesty. So, are you guilty? He said, Yes, indeed, Your Majesty. I deserve my punishment. 
Frederick then summoned the jailer and ordered him to release this guilty wretch at once. I will not have him kept in this prison where he will corrupt all the fine innocent people who occupy it. So there is wit and uh, the sense of humor, but this is the truth. This man was not deceiving others and himself. He confessed his sins and he was granted forgiveness. The key ingredient of accepting as we stand in the light of God is to say and confess, yes, God, I am a sinner. That sounds terrible, but we have to acknowledge that we have followed evil and disobeyed God. But making this admission is also eternally necessary. Because our text this morning says, admitting our sin is a key component in our relationship with God. If we don't admit our sin, then we don't have an advocate. Jesus won't atone for the darkness that we keep pretending is not there. Jesus will just leave us to suffer the consequences of our sin. Hypocrisy is not just an issue of pretend. There are eternal issues at stake here. That is what happens when we stay behind the mask. But when we come out from behind our mask, when we stand in the light with all our sins fully exposed, when we are in the place where we know our sin, as we do that, Jesus doesn't turn away in disgust and repulsion. Instead, he turns to the Father and states our case, and he advocates for us. Jesus, the righteous one, points to those who are following him and says to his father, Father, they may look like hypocrites, but they have come out from behind the mask. They are in the light, and I have purified them by my own blood. They have confessed their sin, and they have been forgiven. I have paid for their sin. It is finished once and for all. Father, look at my innocence, look at my purity, look at my righteousness, not their sinfulness, wickedness, and hypocrisy. Father, look at me and forgive them and accept them. That's what Jesus always does. Brothers and sisters, John has written this letter that we can know we have eternal life. How can we, as we are so aware of our sin, know that we have eternal life? Step out from behind the mask. Confess your sin. Call out to Jesus who is our advocate and keep standing in the light. That's what we need to do. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that even if we are still sinners, even if we often are behind the mask, by your love, grace, and mercy, you have forgiven us our sins and accepted as your children. We thank you for our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is our advocate. Help us, give us strength and faith, so we may keep standing in the light and the truth. 
so we may continue to live as obedient children of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The next hymn is Search Me, O God. Thank you. 